Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Kaylee Filio is back with us. She is the sales and marketing manager at PartsEdge.com, a great friend of the Fixed Ops Roundtable and community. Kaylee, welcome back to the event. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited about what we're going to talk about. <laughs> you had a big segment at the last event where you talked about a, a topic that a lot of us have tiptoed around for a long time. It's called obsolescence. And a lot of people have reached out um, both, you know, then and now uh, on the need and on the importance of obsolescence. So I thought it'd be appropriate if I just come back to you, you know, here we are at the beginning of the year, 2023. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of dealers, you know, face that in, in different degrees. And I know it's something that you specialize in at, at Parts Edge. We do. And, you know, I want to start off with saying that we we are technically not a source to offload obsolescence. So we're not like a parts broker. We don't buy obsolescence. Um, but we, what we do is we look at the data. So we look at the health of the inventory and we identify the domino effect. And that's what I talked about in the last was the domino effect of obsolescence. Where, where are areas that we can help support parts managers better to have more of a pulse on the domino effect of obsolescence? So that's what we focus on. It affects so many dealers to different degrees, different franchises. Um, and like I said, a lot of folks have talked to us about that. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit about some of those domino factors, if you will, because um, you help dealers identify and, you know, find those bottlenecks, if you will, and find out what maybe some of the causes of these things are. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you found. And I know you've got, um, I think you mentioned you've got a study uh, coming up with a, a dealer or dealer group that you worked with recently. Yeah, so um, we we did a case study with a client who from, I it was not even a year, I think it was maybe eight months from the time they started to the time that we did the case study. Um, and, you know, his obsolescence really wasn't that bad for how much inventory he had, but it still was, you know, you never really want to have obsolescence. And his results were amazing because he, he went from 150K in obsolescence to about 5K. Um, and it was just a matter of really just looking at the data and looking at the DMS and the source setups and giving him the tools to better manage all of that. Cause that's what it boils down to. He had a great, he has a great operation without parts edge, but with us, we were able to help him really take control over his data and see um, where, where the problems were coming from. So. And, you know, there's a lot of things happening, you know, in our world right now in parts in terms of availability, what we can get, what we can't get. So, I mean, it's a slippery slope, right? What do I stock? Do I overstock? Yeah. Um, you've uh, had a panel of some experts that are appearing at this event. And, um, you know, they talked about, you know, inventories and, you know, not being afraid to stock. But, you yeah. know, obsolescence does and it can happen and um, it can happen pretty quickly, you know, to a dealership. It really can. And, and that's where I think with obsolescence is having so much tied up in that it, it you can't have more of the right parts. So with the study, we were able to show there was like a 97 per, or 87 percent decrease in obsolescence. But in his active selling parts, it was like a 67 percent increase. But the beauty of it was his actual overall inventory decreased by 80,000. So they have less invested now, but they have more of the right selling parts and then they have less of the, the wasted parts. So it's a lot uh, of the people watching this event are are not in the parts department. They're in the service uh, area. They're service directors. They're fixed op directors. They're general managers. You know, um, this can easily get out of hand. How often should they be looking at this? Uh, what do you recommend? Are there, you know, are there time frames? Is it is it weekly? Is it monthly? Is it daily? Um, you know, what are some of the best practices that you've seen out there with the dealers that you work with? Well, I think we most can agree that the number one cause of obsolescence is special order parts. And I think that's a daily, that's a daily review. That's something that you need to delegate to someone to help manage um, and making sure that that those special order parts aren't sitting on the shelves um, for too long. And then if they aren't going to come back or if you couldn't, um, 
have the customer prepay if it's warranty or whatnot, um, making sure that you return them <laughs> and not letting them sit there. So I think the biggest thing is special order control. And then, um, and then just, you, you know, making sure there's processes in place to, um, cause what you had mentioned was, you know, people are stocking up on things that are selling a lot more of, but there's like this fine line because you can't, you don't want to overstock yourself. So you want enough breath, enough breath and width into your inventory so that you're not having too much of what you need, right? Like there's yeah. this, this like balance that that parts people or parts managers have to find, and it's it's a it's a technique <laughs> for sure. So who, uh, describe to us who do you work with at the dealership? How did how do they get started? You know, does the is it typically a a general manager, a fixed ops director who reaches out to you, where do you start? And then how do you start that whole process? Is it with the parts manager, the assistant managers? How do you do that? That is a great question because it depends on the dealership. I have dealers that reach out because they have a newer parts manager that they want to get them more support. So I, I start the conversation with the dealer. Um, and then I also have ex really seasoned parts managers that are, they're feeling really good about their process, but they just feel like they could do more or they want more support. And so they'll reach out to us. So it, it kind of depends on where the dealership is at, but ultimately our day-to-day -day interaction and who we're working with closely is the parts manager. Um, dealers get involved. It just kind of depends on, you know, how involved that dealer is actually with, with their parts department. Are there reports that you recommend or generate that, you know, the, the decision makers need to be looking at? Um, tell us a little bit about that, because I think that's, you know, that's, a, it's important to be aware of. Yeah. So we look at, we use the DMS. So there's a lot of reports that the DMS already has, but the biggest report that we send that we generate um, with our own um, technology, our own way is um, it's just an inventory. It's the best way to say or describe it is an inventory performance report or health report. Ooh, okay. um, and that's yep. what I talked about in the last panel was the domino effect. So we're, we're essentially tracking that we're tracking your selling active inventory, your excess inventory, um, your force talk, which special orders kind of fall into that category, nothing that met the criteria, and then um, your technical obsolescence. So, what is coming? That's your way of forecasting obsolescence. And then you're actually, we're actually looking at 13 months no sale and 13 months no receipt for obsolescence, because um, you could just receipt a part in, but the history doesn't match. So you have to look at those, um, those those categories. So that's really what our dealers like to see, because it's on one page, and they're like, "This is my investment. This is where it's going. They have control over it." Like we're helping. Everyone kind of speak the same language with that report. And communication is so important. Let's talk about that because I know on the recent panel, um, you talked about it with a number of retail parts experts, that communication between parts and service and bringing that together. And uh, also, I think that I heard the word synergy come up a couple different times. Talk to us about that because you had a number of questions you asked them and that communication importance kept coming up along the way. The communication was, I think, came up in everything I asked. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it's process um, too. So communicating the process, working with the team. Um, I know a lot of our clients, when the fix ops and the service and the parts are all working together and, and we're having those conversations, the results are better because everyone um, can see eye to eye and service can understand parts and then parts can understand. So it's just everyone's kind of understanding everything and communication is the biggest thing. And I think how you achieve that is, um, is simply communicating. I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. talk, having those conversations, being a leader and getting everyone together to, to communicate and having a process. And I know you've even gone so far as to talk with some of the leaders on the panels about qualities they look for when hiring for the parts and service department. And it's interesting, Kaylee, that one of the things or I heard it a couple of times is that it's almost so important to grow your own people, you know, exactly. whether they came out of a, you know, being a, dri a driver for parts or, you know, working on the lot, you know, but to bring them up through the ranks and give them, I think the term was the career path. The career path. Yeah. Because that allows you, it, when you're showing you, your team that there's an opportunity to become a manager and we all know that not everyone really desires that there are, and I think it's okay. 
that, that there are employees out there that may not want to eventually be a parts manager or a service manager. Um, but just communicating that career path so that you're grooming them and not just kind of throwing them in the role because that's what has happened over the years is parts managers just kind of fall into this this uh, because they were just kind of like the next person without even having that career path in mind. Um, so I think having that, you're able to train them kind of more ahead of time and it's not as big of a deal. So I'm a, a fixed ops director or general manager or parts manager and I reach out to the Kaylee Filio. Um, Take us through the process. And by the way, are there any restrictions on DMS, uh, that, you know, preventing me from doing business with you? Or are there any that you prefer? Or do you work with all of them across the board? Um, yeah, we work with all of them. We've worked with PBS and we worked CDK, dealer track. It's, uh, it really doesn't matter the DMS because the data and the inventory and the way that uh, you source and organize it, it's all, um, you know, parts is parts. <laughs> so that doesn't quite matter. Yeah. Okay. So um, how long typically until, um, you know, you're able to do an assessment on a dealership and say, okay, you know, here's where we kind of have to go to, you know, to get it straight. You mentioned special order parts and maybe misdiagnosing, you know, some of those things are some of the reasons behind why we have special order parts and they become obsolescent. But how long does it take you to identify what some of the bottlenecks are and how often do you, you keep, you know, on top of the dealerships during your process? So it, I, we can identify pretty quickly, even even not even looking at the inventory, just having the conversations with the team, because um, a lot of times they kind of already know what's going on. They just need that that support. Um, but to get set up and start working with us, it's, it's it's pretty quick. It's a couple weeks after everyone kind of decides this is what we want to do. Um, it's just a matter of having that conversation of this is what we're going to do in the DMS and then executing it. So it's fairly simple <laughs> once we get going. And, you know, congratulations to you because you've put a face on the parts department now, right? Which I think was badly needed. And you've put a lot of, you know, you've shine a bright light on, on parts and say, you know what, this is an opportunity. And there's not too many companies, if any, who do what parts edge does, uh, Kaylee. Um, you know, I mean, your star is rising and I, I know uh, the parts edge clients, I would imagine, you know, come back and say a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, Kaylee got us involved with, with parts edge. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I, I'm, I really think it's the parts edge team that we've, we've created that really helps execute the process. You know, I, I get to, I get that fun job where I get to talk about what we can do and then the team gets to execute it. But um, you know, it's, it's been great. And I, you know, I think that we've, because we've always focused on inventory control and parts, We've always kind of stayed in our lane where we when we can call ourselves, we're experts in parts in the DMS because we've been doing this for over 25 years, just just being parts edge in business. I mean, the founders have been in the business, you know, I don't even want to say how long <laughs> they might get mad at me. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations to you. Um, you. Parts edge is a very unique opportunity, everybody. Uh and this is a unique time in our industry. You know, here we are at the beginning of the year. You know, we want to make sure we got our inventories right. We want to make yeah. sure we have our processes down right. Kelly, if our audience wants to reach out to you um, and just maybe, you know, find out if, you know, they're on the right path or, you know, things that yeah. you could do to help improve them. How do they go about reaching out to, to Kelly Filio? You know, it really just depends on how you want to be, how you want to communicate. I'm on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, find me there. Um, my email uh, go to the website. Uh, I think my calendar is connected to the website and um, just, you know, I, I love having the conversations with dealerships to, you know, it, it's not, it's really not for everyone. you know, if you're, if you're not trying to, to take things to the next level and you feel like you're doing a good job, then you probably aren't the right person. But if you want to do better and um, you know, you're looking for ways to, to improve, then you're probably the right fit. So <laughs> And you've got um, a lot of white papers. You've got a lot of great information. Yeah. I know that there were some dealers, you know, uh, who are not clients of yours yet. Okay. You know, <laughs> but, you know, maybe they're not in that cycle just yet. But however, they're very interested in reading those white papers. And, you know, yeah. I get your emails with all the information that you've got in those newsletters. So it's action packed yeah. with a lot of very valuable, you know, go to content. So. 
That is one thing that I really focused on when I started in this role was providing content that's that's four parts people or anyone that wants to learn more about it because there's not a lot. So we have ebooks on our website and our newsletter every month. We're focusing on topics that are really important. So um, yeah, if anything, subscribe to that. <laughs> Everybody, Kaylee Filio is the go-to parts girl. She's the sales and marketing manager at partsedge.com. Uh, you can visit her there on partsedge.com on social media. She's all over the place on social media. It's great. And her email is scrolling at the bottom. Kaylee, uh, congratulations. Um, we're off to a great start for 2023. And uh, I look forward to having uh, you help uh, a whole lot of dealers and, um, you know, make our business even stronger. Thank, thanks you for having me and allowing me to talk about parts. <laughs> Kaylee Philly, everybody from Parts Edge here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.